The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Back in North Carolina, finally. It was a great trip to see everybody down in Clearwater at the TFNN main office. It's always such a joy. You guys should drop out down there if you're in the neighborhood. Awesome town. Great office, good people down there, but uh, good to be back home as usual. And I hope you guys have been well. Had a great three-day weekend. Hope everything was uh, joyous. Everybody got a chance to see some family. Let's immediately get into the Canadian dollar. Uh, this is one that that I've been kind of waiting patiently on. I mean, I'm you know I'm I'm a big fan of crude oil kind of turning around here right now. Um. And that being said, you know, the Canadian dollar with that relationship, Larry Pesavento has talked about it a lot. As we go into crude, before we reference this, I'm just going to pull up our – got a new setup behind me too, by the way. I hope you guys like it. It's better than the <laughs> the other the other background that we had. Here's, uh, here's crude oil, the May contract. And here's, you know, here's the situation – uh, relatively thin profile, and this is kind of concerning. This this profile has been in force since. Uh, good gracious, been in force since the first of January here. So, again, ending March pretty soon. And as we look at this, we look at this as a situation of possible low volatility when we get in here and uh again you know looking at the inflection points the 39 up top or down below and the 42 and a half up top i'm rounding these numbers off i think we're probably going to just rattle around in here and get kind of non-directional with crude oil in general so what does that mean for the canadian dollar as we go back into the cad here there's two things i want to talk about there's and this is again first day of the week. Um, there's a, a yellow bar happening on on the uh, Canadian dollar USD cross. That's the first thing. That means we're going to have some new inflection points, and that means a new range, more than likely. And we're also rallying back up into this 132.94. Let's just call it 133, and kind of backing off. So, again. I think it's going to be some decent range-bound trading days for the Canadian dollar, and I think the lid right now at 132.94 and a half is going to be something you can kind of lean on against on the short side, and hopefully this thing will just kind of trail off a little bit, and we'll still have this particular feature on the weekly stay yellow. Now, what does that mean? That means we're going to have a new profile, more than likely appear. That's an algorithm. Um, that's hard coded in the system. There it is right there. There's the CAD USD cross in the scanner, that yellow peel back, and we're below profiles on the daily. And there's those there's those inflection points we just spoke of, that 132.94 and a half. So again, looking for this to kind of peter around here, might have some decent range trading type days. Uh, remember to put your stops in if you're gonna play that sell high buy low situation. But again, I think it's a decent a decent setup and some and some things that are kind of relatively important to it being that crude oil trade. Remember, this Canadian dollar's got a big, big, super big relevance to crude oil. Let me get my TFNN clock up here. Not exactly set up this morning. Here we go. So while we're on currencies, let's take a look at the euro here really quick. And, you know, there's not a lot to talk about here there's nothing to really hang on to um we closed above went back and retested two weeks ago and we're just kind of hovering with nothing <laughs> nothing in the vicinity 
uh, 113.42 up top. That's coupled with that 113.52 from the weekly from the from before, and then you've got something down below. But again, I had some emails about the euro. I, I just consider it a no trade right now. You don't have any any leverage on this thing, in my opinion. Let's hit the Aussie dollar while we're on currencies really quick, just to kind of catch up here at the beginning of the week. Um, here's the situation on the Aussie dollar. We've, we've really enjoyed this, this close above, come back and retest, and now we're just kind of consolidating, in my opinion, that kind of flag continuation thing where you can still play stops below 74.39 on the Aussie dollar. Um, you know, gold coming back, crude oil kind of, relaxing a little bit um you know this country if you i never experienced looking at some of the things that they do uh digs holes and sells what's in the hole so again you know i'm looking for this to use that 7439 as still a support on this and then you know breakouts above 7542 again are going to have to be bought so the tone on this particular currency i think the leverage still is really really good on the long side um, we're going to reference the uh, Shanghai really quick because a lot of times what goes on in China predicates some things that are happening within the Aussie dollar. So we're going to look at the Shanghai really quick here. As we look at this, you know, we talked about temporary lid 3056 targets on the upside. And I've got a bird crashing into a window over here. Uh, 3056 on the upside that was met we're just kind of petering around in the middle of, and just to kind of put this in perspective for you you know this, this this particular index is super volatile this is a balanced area we're within right now don't see a ton of leverage on the long term i usually try to trade this or look at this on the long term you do have some support on the intermediate at 2944 but again i think that's going to be broken and we're just going to continue to peter down they had some decent economic news in in uh china shanghai index didn't act that well on that news so again the aussie dollar could spin around here but remember 74 39 and a half is going to be that support stops already in around if you get stopped out you get stopped out i still think that trade's got 80 in it so I think you got a decent risk reward scenario when it comes to trading the Aussie dollar. And let's see. Is John from Philadelphia with us today? Is he on? Fletch, Fletch. Nope, it's not on yet. Don't see him. I want to talk about these these November beans and some information that I was looking through and talked to some guys in Chicago about. So when he gets on, I want to I kind of want to go over that. Um we're going to take a look at a couple other things pre-market here. Gold, obviously, this is on some folks' radar screen at TFNN. Tom does a really good newsletter on gold. If you guys have never gotten a chance to get a demo of it or looked at it, he's been right as rain lately um, and picked up some, some mega points. We're going to take a look at this when we come back, folks, and try to figure out where gold's going to go. We'll be right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We were getting ready to get into gold here. And uh, somebody knows I got the tractor back there. That thing's old. I think I, I think uh, that model was early '70s, late '60s. So I kind of collect tractors. Anyway, uh, twelve forty-four and a half was that big number on gold. We bounced off of it. Had a decent bounce last week up into twelve sixty sixty-one. Again, that big number sixty-four on the weekly, but. Um, you know, it's easy to kind of look back at it and go, wow, I should have been out of it there. Um, in the heat of the battle, when you're looking at these things, sometimes it's it's hard to mentally and physically just hit the button when you're supposed to on the either the short side or the stop outside. I'm aware of that more than anybody else. Um, but as we look at this and keeping that in mind, I hate to beat a dead horse, but putting these stops in when you're placing the trade is always a good idea. These things can run away from you. And then, you know, it's sometimes it feels good when you get stopped out. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. Um, but, uh, that's what stops are for. And, and that's why it really doesn't take a lot of, a lot of times if I'm looking at these things, I'll, I'll try to find some other reason to stay in the trade opposed to what, you know, the, uh, I guess the mental stop would be, um, but it, you know, it's, it's just, I, you know, again, it's just a good idea to put stops in. So right now, you know, what do you do with gold? We had a pretty big number here before at 12, 18, 12, 19. I, I just don't, you know, we, we've, we've got a POC here on the weekly that we've hit. Um, that's around that 1200 number. We reached the low this morning, I think a 1206, that POC is a 1203, 1204, and we bounced off of it. Remember in a wide profile, and this is gold, we broke out of that 1100, 1104 area. We had the new profile appear, attempt to appear. That happened, and we've just not been able to kind of really stay and stick above this 1264 and definitely that intermediate 1244 and a half. So again, it's kind of weird and convenient to some degree how that POC in a wide profile, that's another inflection point. You got 
you know, 1244 and a half, then you got this 1203 down below that general neighborhood to pick battles around. Right now, if you're not in the trade, you're basically in between those two big inflection points, 1203 and 1244 and a half. So if you're waking up this morning and thinking, what do I do with gold? If you hadn't placed your buy opportunities around that POC uh, last night or Thursday afternoon or the last time gold was open, you're just not in this trade. And what do you do with it now if you're not in the trade? I, I just don't think you have any leverage here. You just, you know, if you're waking up and you're looking at this going, wow, what do I do with gold? I got to trade it today. You don't have to. Um, I think now if you get any rallies back up into 1244 and a half, you know, the long-term slant on gold is definitely north. Um, and we could explore this entire fair, entire fair auction down into 12, 6, 1163, which is $100 an ounce lower than 1264, the unfair high. That's how wide this profile is. You rarely get, I mean, this is what, all things considered, almost a 10%, eh, 8%. It's almost exactly 8% height of the profile relative to the underlying instrument. That is a very, very big, wide profile. So what do you do with it? Um, I think rallies back up into 1244 and a half are a short-term sell opportunity. Again, Joey's been on the show talking about, you know, trying not to get mixed up with being on the wrong side of the trade when the long-term view is a certain way. That would be a trading opportunity. I still feel like gold may be in bullish mode here. So, again, closes – if guys who are just wanting to stay with the long-term trend up, closes above 1244 and a half are really going to have to happen or retraces back into that 1203 for buy support. So you've got support at 1203, that general neighborhood, and, and kind of breakouts back into a intermediate fair auction above 1244 and a half. If that makes any sense, silver, man, just not a fan of this thing. Um, I'll show you the long-term silver chart. This is just underperformed like crazy. I listened to Larry a couple times on this one. This has just been not the metal du jour. Okay, so uh, let's see if. John from Philadelphia is not on this morning. Okay, so we're not going to talk about beans yet. We're going to talk about the uh, tenure really quick. This is really a no trade too. I mean, I'm I'm a little mixed up on this one. This is the twelve one twenty nine or two on the ten year, trying to get some bearing on what the broad stock market is going to do. I just don't, you know, dovish comments sitting twelve one twenty nine twelve kind of sitting around that you know this is the daily unfair high that weekly unfair low i just don't see a lot of direction in this i would not step into this at all right now put a gun to my head um you know i think these closes above and retraces back into this 129 are pretty bullish actually but again don't see a lot of leverage there so i'm kind of staying away from that instrument until we have a riper opportunity it's not something i'd really like to step into so let's get into the s and p's let's reference the scanner and let's kind of look and see what happened here last week. Um, the thing, I mean, we're up a little bit this morning without question. Um, the thing that's a little concerning here is we're starting to have the internals just kind of fold over. Um, we're not in negative territory on the daily. I'm going to kind of show you that, that. Here's the weekly. Staying really, really strong here. Um, that's uh, That's – somewhat overextended and we've got the dailies coming into semblance here the four hours crossed over uh 60 minutes looking a little weak so these are the internals relative to what happened on 30 thursday's close so we're up about three or four points this morning i don't see a lot of leverage here either um you know it's, it's something that when we look at this poc the 2046 that's held twice uh we've kind of come up into it not this morning, but again, that's going to be a big resistance area. I'm still going to stand by that 2046. That's based on what the 10 years doing, based on the breadth. And you've also got this 2047 and a half unfair highs on the daily. So uh, I'm looking at that as a resistance area. And any daily closes above that 
are going to be closes above the top of the mountain on the weekly POC and above this daily unfair high. So, again, you're going to have to take that as bullish if it closes above. But I think you've got a trading range situation on the S&Ps in general right now. Got a little bit of a mixed bag on breath calculations and still a little looking a little heavy uh, as far as the internals go right now. We're going to take a look at Apple. Um, this stock sometimes has quite a bearing on the index itself. So here's the situation on Apple. Had that close last week above that 104 area, and then we've kind of rattled around here above 104. We're going to talk about this a little bit more when we come back from break, folks, so stay tuned. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stop price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, Occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The April 14th funding deadline is quickly approaching, so hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. All right, so as we look at this, we're waiting for our uh, machine to reboot here. And I found out how to track positions here on uh, eSignal finally, so we're going to actually start that tomorrow for sure. I just had to try to figure out how to get the options available in here to be able to track on a uh, paper trading mechanism here. Um, 
So what we wanted to do, I wanted to reference, now that I see Mr. John from Philadelphia on, I want to take a look at these November beans. Um, he talked about possibly doing a play here. Come on, guys, get up here. Waiting for these uh, long-term charts to get up. Okay. Um, we're going to look at the scanner really quick, and we're going to notice, I'm just going to reference you guys, that the soybeans in here are still on May. This is so-called front month right now, but we're going to look at the November contract. And, John, if you're listening, I took a you know, I took some time over the holidays actually to just kind of talk to some folks in Chicago and and some friends of mine who are deeply involved. One guy, uh, you guys might know him, uh, Andy Daniels. He's a probably one of the biggest grain traders up in Chicago. He's kind of retired, but he's can't stay out of it. Uh, started Daniels Trading. Uh, he actually had <laughs> gotten a CFTC fine one time for carrying over a thousand contracts of rice as a position at one time because that is uh, not allowed to get that heavy on a speculator type position so that lets you know how thousand contracts of rice in a relatively illiquid market i mean that's a pretty picked up about 20 million dollars on that trade by the way but um um n not not a small trader so we were talking about beans November beans. I don't want to sway anybody's judgment, but I was just poking around fundamentally trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, there's not, you know, there's, there's, there's not a lot of decent bullish news out there for beans as far as fundamentals go. I'm looking at the technicals right now and I'm sorry, I'm kind of looking way over here. I've got a, a new monitor set up. We're going to change this tomorrow. Um, 915 and, and a quarter is obviously that close above and possibly go back and retest. Now, no matter what the fundamentals say, if we spin around above this 915 area and stay above it and continue to stay above it and just kind of churn above it, that's going to be relatively bullish in my mind. That means it's not wanting to back off from these recent highs. Um, and also we're technically, and again, this particular profile has been in force since September of last year. So as we, on this November new crop, new crop contract so again 915 is going to be support but i'm not so sure that we're going to hold above there um again not not a lot of and again this is an indicator in itself a lot of times when a lot of folks out there are not very bullish a lot of times it will just continue to squeeze up and force people that are not very bullish to get out of a short trade so um again 915 is going to be the big number here we're just going to have to pay attention to it and um uh, that's the way I'm looking at beans. I mean, again, I think you can buy support off of that area. But, again, make sure you put your stops in. Give it a little bit of noise, availability to, to, to place that trade. But, uh, again, 915 is going to be support on those Novi beans. All right, we're going to hit the dollar really quick. As we look at this, uh, we've... Obviously, I had some technical breakdowns below 97.75, and what are we doing now? We're coming up into this particular area, 96.23. So I'm looking at this as, with a little bit of a volatility factor in play, looking at this as a little bit of a shorting area for the dollar. We've rallied pretty well here. We've rallied 200 pips almost. In fact, actually 200 pips on the dollar. So as we look at this, 96.23 is going to be something to lean against on the short side when it comes to the dollar. How's that going to affect the U.S. stock market? Man, it's a little mixed up right now. Um, didn't market didn't really care too much about the dollar selling off. In fact, it seem, seemingly enjoyed it. So remember, looking at the market, we've got a 24. If you if you joined us late, 2046 is going to be the uh, resistance area combined with that 2047 and a half on the daily and then you got support at 2021 if you've got to trade s ps today um, coming back from the holidays uh, again we're trading up about five points on the s ps this morning already I, I I don't see a lot of direction in the s ps 
and uh, consolidation is probably going to happen here with these things right now. We talked about gold. We talked about crude a little bit for you guys joining us late. And we're going to take a look at a couple of different sectors within the scanner and some ETFs. But I think we have a caller right now, Ed from Lexington, Kentucky. Wow, nice town. Ed, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm looking for a small stock. It's a GBSN. It's doing a reverse split, and it just got a product approved by the FDA. Is it anything to look at? It used to be a $300 stock. <laughs> wow. Is that true? It's trading 20 cents. Is that what that says? Yeah, and it's due to reverse split, one for 35 on March 30th. I'm wondering, am I wasting my time here, or is some some uh, cheese to be made here? Uh, I'm looking at it. Um, I usually don't play around with these stocks because they're so story-oriented. Um, but let's let's give you some numbers here. How about that, just to pay attention to? Yeah, because it, it got something big approved by the FDA over the weekend on a staph infection and a Motex panel being cleared. So I don't know if that has something to do with short cover. And it used to be three hundred and sixty-six dollars a share. Well, I tell you what, um, it looks like it's trading twenty-eight right now. Is that fair to say? Right. Pre-market, yeah, okay. Pre-market. Okay. The the good news is, <laughs> going into our weekly, let's just take a look at this. And a lot of times, <coughs> excuse me, Ed. A lot of times, I will go to stock twits myself and just look at the latest story stocks. Is this? Have you looked at stock twits? Um, is this no, something? But I, I, I will start looking at it. Well, I tell you what, it may be something that the uh, social media crowd, and I'm trying to get this in perspective here for us, it may be something that the social media crowd is kind of chattering about. And if you go there, um, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it, you know, you can catch the latest uh, noise as far as the fundamentals go. But looking at the technicals, this is an interesting little situation. Last week of all times. I'm going to keep this on my radar screen. I'm glad you brought it up. 20, 24 cents is the unfair high on the weekly. All right, we, we got above there. We obviously pulled back and settled back on Thursday. But that 24 cents, new profile, which is kind of cool, we have a daily unfair high at 26. So 24 and 26 are big barriers for this stock. We closed above uh, on Wednesday, I guess, and then pulled back, but we're trading above that 2426 today. I would look at 2426 as kind of a DMZ to orient a stop below. And I think I think you've got a, something to pay attention to here, actually. Okay. I will. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for calling, Ed. Bye. We'll be right back, guys. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Let me get my emails out of the way here. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, going into the uh, ETF profile heat grid in the scanner, we're noticing, wow, just a uh, sea of green on the daily and the weekly. That is uh, that's, uh, kind of amazing. Had a little volatility on Wednesday and Thursday. Here's the four-hour. Uh, the financials kind of took it hard last week towards the end there. But let's uh, let's take a look at those financials in an ETF sense. XLF. And we talked about a couple of stocks last week. Just want to follow up on them on the financials. Um, you know, uh, ten year kind of looking like with those Dovis comments. Again, uh, it's kind of non directional right now. No way to really kind of pick that. It's just kind of compressing into a point right now. So that's. Uh, that's something, and it's right around that weekly unfair low, 129 on the 10-year. Financials obviously don't like those type of comments. Uh, here's the unfair highs, 2237. It looks like this morning we are trading 2238. So, uh, again, a little bit of a pullback in the financials. But, again, how do you trade the financials if you're somewhat bearish on them like I am? You want to drill down into the scanner and you want to take a look at some opportunities within the financials. They're the seller dweller on our daily, even though there's still positive breath, all things considered. Um, I haven't looked at this this morning, but we're going to take a look at uh, Morgan Stanley. This is one we were talking about last week. Obviously, Goldman Sachs, we want to take a look at that. And as we look at the scanner, we're going to just kind of see that error down 32. That means that we're within a balanced area, still in a downtrend, Morgan Stanley, and trading below profiles on the daily. So, Again, let's just pull up MS. Let's just walk through this. This is one we talked about last week. Again, you know, just trying to find a sector that eh, might not, you know, be the best thing in the world. Uh, and then trying to find the stocks that are really showing themselves within the sector. 26.93. I, I promise you, I did not, you know, prepare to focus on this stock, but going back and just looking at it blindly. Um, you know, we talked about putting stops above 27. Again, we're down, what is that, 8% eight, eight on this stock? Is that, yeah, about 8% on the stock. Since we got into that inflection point, we reached a high of 2661, unfair high of 2693. So, again, like Joey talked about, not wanting to miss the trade and be too stingy, being able to just get something into that type of scenario uh, instead of missing the trade. So, what do you do with it now? Uh, again, you know, we we had a tough day. We got down below profiles. 2541 is now, in my opinion, resistance area for this. You could still bang this as if it gravitates back up into 2541. And again, right now, pre-market, it looks like we're trading 24. And we haven't opened yet this morning. So again, looking at stocks that may provide some movement in the direction where we think the leverage might be. Here's Goldman Sachs. Uh, 
again, talked about this one staying below 155.02. That's happened. This is, again, something's wrong here. I think this stock could head lower. We're trading, looks like, pre-market 153.60. Um, so, again, the leverage point on this is 155. Stops above on this particular instrument. Let's go back into the... Uh, where's the one we... Okay, so we want to look at the... Healthcare sector really quick. This one kind of popped its head up a little bit, but uh, MCK, we want to look at this one. This is one we looked at last week, MCK. Trying to find, jeez, oh, here we go, MCK. Trying to find some instruments that uh, we're able to hopefully leverage off of. We did the show, when was that? Mm. I was in Tom's office and doing the show. Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Monday? Ah, I can't remember. Um, 158.86 is still going to be stops above that on this particular instrument. Um, I think this thing could come unglued on the downside. And as we look at this, we talked about 153 being targets down below. This is our weekly. But again, I think we can break that back. I think we can break down below 153.14, and then there will be quite a few folks trying to cover this particular stock let's go back into the scanner and in the healthcare sector let's just kind of put the stocks that are not doing that well in the radar screen here esrx uh we want to take a look at eli Lilly lly let's take a look at that one lly let's just see what's going on here Again, you know, you've got some stocks showing their hand. You've had the close below. Look, go back and retrace on retrace on Eli Lilly, seventy-one ninety-three stops above. Looks like this thing could head even lower. And again, you might be saying, "Well, God, why didn't you tell me about this when it was trading eighty-six? Um, the scanner is going to give you these inflection points as these things are are able to be put on the radar screen. The reason I picked it up this morning was because it's red. It's, below, it's trading below on the weekly. Markets rallied significantly lately, and the daily has kind of continued to regulate this trade down. So again, on the scanner, it's showing the general neighborhood of the weekly. It's got, it's got a 10% variance here relative to the height of the profile, so it's putting it on your radar screen. We're trading below, and again, the arrow down on the daily signifying that the downtrend is still enforcing the intermediate. Um, so this is one, in my opinion, to kind of continue to take a look at. Let's take a look at this one, AL, ALXN. This is one we talked about, ALXN. And let's see what's going on now. All right, well, again, you know, we talked about the close below. We'll go back and retrace, 136.80, still standing by that. I think this stock's going to have trouble, stops above. And that's the big number on this particular stock. I like how it's acting on the short side, which looks like we're trading 133.20 pre-market. So again, stops above 136.80 on this particular stock might provide a decent little trade down. Uh, let's see here. Eh, some other seller dwellers here. Let's look at REGN. R E G N. Again, healthcare stocks. Uh, another one. Eh. Wow. When you look at these stocks and you look at the sector, I mean, there's obviously it's obviously something not in play. Um, and there's some stocks that are really showing themselves as as stocks that just do not want to be bought in this environment. One, 383. This is a rich stock, without question kind of did the sympathetic retracement back up into the regulator down and again you've got to you've got to look at this now uh, as we got a weekly close we retraced a little bit too much last week but we kind of got into that DMZ 383 was the upper part of it and again I'm looking at this stock hopefully we can get back down below 30 or 370 80 and start looking at this from the short side again we'll be right back guys
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, was just looking at the scanner, looking at the ETF section, the XLE. Uh, somebody in the den asked me to look at SWN. Obviously, trading above profiles in the weekly and daily. This has been a relatively inexpensive stock that's had some decent up moves. Um, obviously, had a decent down move last month, month and a half ago. And uh, looks like it did it ever break below lows five dollars. Lows 530. No, never went below. We got in the vicinity of a run for lows 577. That's a scary situation. That's a that's a something when we get below profiles and we've got a cheap stock like that. And we're near recent lows. A lot of times it'll do a flush. It didn't do that. That's uh, kind of cool that that didn't happen. But again, um, you know, 654 looks like it can be used as support. But I'm not really thinking crude oil and you know, this thing seemingly hasn't reacted extremely well relative to crude oil lately. It looks like it's found a bottom here. I'll say that in general, if you just kind of look at the grand scheme of things. But uh, I'm not expecting crude oil to really get super happy on the north side again here. Um, so I don't think you're going to have a ton of help to drive this thing north. But again, I mean, I, I like the way it's, it's found a bottom here. And I like the way it's trading above profiles. And if you you know if if this is something that uh, 
that you're looking at from the long side, I still think you can orient stops below 650 on this and just continue to keep playing that same game. I mean, I I think uh, 654, you've got to, you know, you're trading above profiles here. Also on the daily, this is 677. All of these are given, I'm just showing e-signal charts right now, but all these are given right within the scanner. There's that 677, there's the 654. Um, again, we're trading at the bottom of a profile in the 240 or near the bottom. Looks like we have an open. Are we open this morning? Yep, 745. Eh, um, you know, these these stocks have – some of these stocks in the XLE have really had their day when, when crude oil moved up. This one didn't exactly participate as well. That's the only thing concerning about it. But uh, I like the general action of it, throw everything else out the window. I think crude oil's put stakes in the ground on the downside. I don't think we're going – you know, I don't think we're going too much lower on crude oil if we pull back. Let's look at the May contract. I know I'm not giving you probably definite answers here, but uh, you've got to, if you're looking to day trade SWN, you have kind of explored the entire fair auction on crude oil. You've hit our targets up top two weeks ago. That Friday close was at, or excuse me, the Friday high was at 42.49, 42.53, four cents from the targets on there. That was met. We've kind of pulled back. Um, Again, I, I've talked earlier in the show that I think crude is going to be in a range. Um, and I don't think we're going to just continue to, to, to break above 42.53 anytime soon. So SWN could, you know, I, I like the setup on it technically. I don't think there's a ton of risk there, put it that way. Uh, we covered oil, or excuse me, gold earlier, guys. Um, wanted to reference one more thing before we left the show here. XLU, this is, the you know, really incredibly powerful trade here 48 45 still the unfair highs looking extremely supportive at that state you got the notes if they continue to head higher um, again we've talked about it being kind of non-directional that's going to be non-directional to head higher on the notes are going to bode well still for the XL. you remember thirst for yield in play here guys on this particular sector so again still bullish on this sector Stay tuned for Larry, guys. We'll be back again tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.